Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. That is the most powerful name you will ever say from your lips, I promise you. Amen. Well, I am so glad to be back in the house of the Lord with each of you. I am so hurt in my heart when we don't have opportunity together as we did not last week with the weather. But I tell you what, it's been a busy week around here. We have housed as many as 28 individuals uh, at one, one night, 24 the other, I think 17 the next. And the last several nights, it's been about 8 or 10 that we have been having folks around the clock here. So pray for your, te- your team here today. We all need the strength to, to go forward. We've prepared three meals a day. We have slept here at night on the couches and floors, and, and we've had a lot of good volunteers. And I want to say thanks to all of the volunteers that helped us this week. You have been tremendous, and we are grateful. And hopefully your hands don't look like mine with pipe glue all over them. You know, I've tried to scrape it off the best I can, but, you know, it's just part of the job, right? You know, when you have broken pipes. So hopefully you got hot water this morning. Some of them may not be here today because they still don't have water. But we're glad you're here today. And if you're needing a plumber, um, don't call me. All right. What does it mean that there is power in the name of Jesus? You just said it, Jesus. Two Sundays ago, I spoke as I shared about a moment in my life when I called out the name Jesus in a moment that my life was spared, I believe, because of his power in that name. Because I was driving and I threaded the needle, so to speak, in a moment when I could have had a tragedy in my life. Jesus. I love it. I love that name. That put my heart to thinking this week about the power of the name of Jesus. The power of the name of Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, he's got some power there in that name. I want to read a little scripture to you why there is power and why we need to pay attention to it. And how he helps us with that power to live prosperous lives faithful, faith-filled lives, authority in our life to overcome. There are things that we need His power to do in this life that we live. And I want to read these verses to you because I believe it will help us if we understand the authority and the power that come with the name Jesus. Let's read Philippians 2, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 11 to you this morning. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? In other words, what he's saying right here is what's the benefit of knowing Jesus and the God power that he benefit he, he has? What's the benefit of that? What is, what is it all about? And Paul writes on, he says, are your hearts tender and compassionate? That's a question you need to ask yourself. Is my heart tender towards God and tender and compassionate towards God? Then he goes on, then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better Than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. That's something we got to practice. Again, we're talking about the authority of the name of Jesus. Goes on, Paul, verse 5. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Listen, to have all and to live as Jesus did, we need to have the character and the authority in our life that he possessed so we can make it through on this earth fighting the enemy. I'm going to say that again. You need the character and the attitude of Christ to be able to walk with the authority that he had here on this earth. You need to have that same attitude. Look at verse 6. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God 
as something to cling to. By the way, just because we can call on the authority of Jesus doesn't make you better than the next guy. Okay? Number seven, verse seven. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. So there is a way to see real life that is different than our own fleshly eyes and what we see, and it's by looking through the spiritual eyes and the attitude of Jesus Christ. Understanding the authority that you have as a child of God, you can see things different than what your life or maybe others without him see. It's like going through this week. It's been some hardships. We have some sitting here today, been sleeping on a little 24-inch cot for the last week. Right, brother? We've had some folks in here that have had no water, no power. It's been tough. But when you have Jesus in your life, you still have peace. You still have hope. You still have a, a desire to move forward. And so there is a way. And if we become like Jesus, there are some great benefits of honoring of honor that come from the eyes of God. Look at the rest of this, and I'm getting to the meat of this conversation today. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor. We're talking about Jesus. And gave him the name above all other names. That at the name of, what? Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Uh, gave him the name above all other names. Jesus. Now, you may say it, Yahshua. There's so many other names that we could be, uh, in this way it's pronounced in different languages and different mindsets. You know, living the li like Jesus, though, elevates our lives, and his name is something that we need to understand, especially in our English dialect, how powerful it is. I don't care if you say Yahshua or if you say Jesus, he knows his name. There is power in that name that God placed there. Looking at uh, to the pages of the Bible, we see there are many names, as I mentioned. There are references like Counselor, Mighty God, Son of God, Son of Man, Emmanuel, Rabbi. Maybe even the anointed one or chosen one or how about Christ? They all are representations of Jesus. Well, these names identify his character and his sonship and his presence. The name Jesus is an embodiment of all of who he is. We need to practice understanding that, that I can call upon Jesus. Let me tell you, we have had young people in our community in the last week that have tried to play this TikTok game on their phone, and they are challenging each other to take pills and overdose or hang themselves till they pass out. And we've had two in our community do that this week. Thank God they're still alive. But because of Jesus, we got the prayer request and we began calling on the name of Jesus and I'm telling you the power of God can move if you have faith to believe. It's when you call upon that name, the character, the presence, the embodiment of who he is. And there aren't enough words or phrases in our vocabulary to really fully represent all that he is, but Jesus, say it with me again, Jesus. This is the name that God placed above every other name. Not merely because of the name. There's a lot of people in our world named Jesus or Jesus. The name Jesse actually comes from that same persuasion. So we have a lot of these names, but it's not about just the name. It's what the essence of that name is. The nature and the character and the embodiment of where that name was given from God himself to a person, an Im a, a creation that God brought upon this life of ours, the walking in the immaculate presence of his body to this earth. The name of Jesus is the most powerful name. 
because God gave it to him. Robed in flesh to his creation of himself and walked among us. God himself. Philippians 2, 9, why? Name that is above every name. Why is that name so powerful? Number one, God gave the name. That's, that's the first reason. Number two, it is because of the sacrifice. Jesus, remember what he did. In a few weeks, we'll be exploring Easter again. Somebody said, we need to change this or that. No, there's nothing to change. It's the same understanding Easter and what that represents when he went to Calvary's hill, a hill called Golgotha, and he was hung on a cross, and he died for you and me and our sins. That was, that's what we understand. And then the resurrection power that came after three days of being buried in a tomb, that is the authority that you have when you call out the name of Jesus in your circumstances. It will cause things to rise that should be alive and well that that the enemy has tried to kill and destroy. Jesus, the sacrifice through living a perfect life and dying that sinner's death and then being resurrected. And then the third thing, the reason that that name is so powerful, Jesus made a way for all of humanity to be saved. You and I. That's an awesome thing. That's a hope that we have. All because of Jesus. All because he made it right with God. He gave us an opportunity. Romans 10, 13 says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So my question to each of you here today is, Have you called on the name of Jesus today? See, I can't live on yesterday. Hello? Hello? Well, I went to the altar 30 years ago or or 10 years ago or five years ago and I gave my heart to Jesus. That's wonderful, but you got to die every day, he says, and take up your cross. We preached about that a couple weeks ago and began to understand that I got to ask Jesus in my heart every day of my life. There's power that comes in that. There's authority that comes in that and there's salvation. Look at Acts 4.12. It says, there is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved, and that name is Jesus. So I need to be calling on the name of Jesus for my salvation, amen? The literal name, Jesus, as I said, is not inherently powerful. It is so powerful because Jesus Christ, God incarnate, made a way for our salvation. We talk about the name of Jesus We're talking about Jesus himself, God, robed in flesh, his character, all that he did. Remember the sacrifice again, because of Jesus' sacrifice and because of his character, who his nature was, who he was, God himself, God gave him the power on the earth. God robed in flesh, had all authority, the scripture says. The name of Jesus compels us because he showed himself to us while he was on this earth, how to live. Romans, you can go read, study Romans, it'll tell you how to live a Christian life and the rest of the Bible too, but that's a very powerful book right there. You can see how Jesus showed us and then like even today coming in here, didn't our worship team do an awesome job this morning? Amen, that was awesome. It compels, it compels me, the, the Spirit of God, to come out of my heart to worship Him and bring Him glory. When I understand what He's done for us, and each person, i got to understand that each one of us, it says we'll come face to face with Him, and we're going to bow our knee one day whether we want to or not. Your flesh will compel, be compelled to bow before Him and confess You either knew him or you didn't. And I'm challenging you today. Confess he's Lord in your life. And it needs to be every day. 
dying daily. That's that statement from Paul. I die daily. I, I have to put this flesh under subjection because it has desires and thoughts and you know it's evil. Our flesh is is not something that is good to be walking by and under our understanding. If I'm just getting all I can from just my flesh and how I think, then I'm not getting all the best that I can. I need Jesus, the Lord of my life, where he is taking over everything. Listen, it requires faith to believe in the power of Jesus. you got to believe. Because if you just say Jesus, it may not mean anything. But when you have faith in your life, I believe in this understanding that Jesus died. He went to the grave and rose again on the third day for my salvation. If I believe that, then I can believe and I will have the authority of the power of the name of Jesus and what it represents. Look at Hebrews eleven six, because it requires faith to believe. Without faith, it is impossible. Everybody say impossible. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. And I would say believe in him there as well. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Well, I sought him 10 years ago, like I said. And I found him at the altar. But it says diligently. That means it's an ongoing process, right? If I diligently am after something, I tell you what, if I want to be good at something, I better be practicing. Practice makes perfect, they say. Well, to some of us, maybe not all of us. But it's still, we're pursuing, we're, we're going after, we have to diligently seek him. Because without faith, his name will not be powerful. You can say Jesus all you want, but without faith in him and believing in him, it's not going to do anything. There's not going to be any power there. Because with the name of Jesus, the most powerful name, there has to be faith. We're instructed in the Bible to pray in the name of Jesus. Why? Because there is authority that comes when you pray if you have faith in your heart to believe what is to come that you're asking for. John 16, 23 and 24 says, And in that day you will ask me nothing. Talking about when we're in the heaven and eternally with him. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. See, I have to have faith in the name of Jesus for even joy to come. And the Bible says when I take in the joy of Jesus, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. See, I can live an overcoming life when I understand that I believe in Jesus with all my heart. And I have then the authority and the power to pray and ask and I shall receive. John 14, 14, Jesus says, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Again, backing up to John, he said, until you ask in my name. What is his name? Jesus, right? The only other name that we, the only name we know under heaven and earth that we call upon is Jesus. And then again here in John 14, ask in my name. Also, 1 John 5. I'm just giving you a few instances here today. 5, John, 1 John 5, 13 through 15. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. What's that name? That you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. See right here again, for me to have eternal life, I need to know who Jesus is, Right? I need to believe upon the Son of God. I need to believe. And then not only that, continue to believe. It's an onward walk with Him. It's a maturing. That's what Romans is all about. It's coming to a maturity as a Christian. Understanding the character and the ways of Jesus as He walked on this earth. Why? Because our flesh is weak, but His Spirit is strong. That's why He says you need to walk in the Spirit of God. Not in the flesh of man, but in the spirit of God helping to guide your life. Verse 14 of 1 John 5. Now this is the confidence 
that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Again, believing in the name of the Son of God. Again, what does that mean? That there's power in the name of Jesus. Well, first of all, if you have faith in him, then you possess the authority that Jesus did. Well, not me, Pastor. I've never been able to do things like he did. Well, it's because you need to increase your faith. It's that simple. He said if you have Faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, you can believe and be saved. But there are some other things that take a little more faith. Hello? You got to believe in things a little bit more. You got to take in a little more. How do I get more faith? The Bible says by reading and intaking the word of God into my life. Because as I read it, I understand it. When my understanding grows, I believe better. It's kind of like learning anything. The more you become confident in something you've learned, the better you're at doing it, right? You're better at understanding why you do it. And so you get more strength in that. And then when things come at you, you say, oh, I got this. In the name of Jesus, you're done. And you take authority. When we believe, here's another way to look at the power. Because you need it to do ministry. Look at your neighbor and say, you got purpose. And here's why. You got a ministry. Tell them you got a ministry. You got a service to provide out of your gifts and talents that God gave you. I don't care when you realize it, if it's at three years old or a or hundred years old, you still have a purpose if you're here. Here's another way to look at that power, Acts 2. In verse 38 says, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Again, there's the name of Jesus. And then it's talking about my heart repenting. What is repenting? Repenting means that I, with my own mouth, confess Jesus is Lord of my life and ask him to forgive me of my sins. And then I turn and I do the opposite of what I've been doing. And then it says, and be baptized. There there should be no break there. If I've asked him in my heart, the next step is right there in the watery grave. And we go down just as he did. The Bible says death, which is repentance, burial, which is the time of baptism, as he was in the grave for three days, and resurrection. We come up out of that water. The Bible says a brand new creature in Christ, that we have his authority in our life, and we are his child. See, there's the way we should understand why I need to be baptized. That's why we baptize. It's because in the power of the name of Jesus, there's something that happens to you as an individual in your spirit. You may think you just go down and you go down dry and come up wet, but that's a whole other reason there because you have to understand the dead man stays in the grave. And the resurrected man or woman that God is calling you to be in him comes up out of that grave with a changed mind moving forward and you walk in maturity day after day after day. When we believe that Jesus is who he says he is, we believe that he is the true son of God. And that leads us to understand that he's the savior of us and the world. So this belief leads us to repent Turn from our sins, confessing that Jesus is Lord. To take on that understanding that salvation is a part of the walk of righteousness for you. It's a walk. It's a journey. Transformation of the mind, the way I think. I've got to change my heart. I've got to get that old desires of the flesh out and have his spirit come in to help me lead the right walk. That's the only way I can overcome. That's why I need to walk through these steps of repentance and baptism and receiving the gift of his Holy Spirit in my life. As a seal, we are gifted, Acts 1 and 8, and filled with the Holy Spirit, and something happens there. Acts 1 and 8 says, but you will receive 
power. Everybody say power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. See, when I believe in Jesus, who is all powerful because he is God incarnate in flesh, walked on this earth, gave himself for me, went back into the heavens awaiting for the day of the resurrecting power of all of us to come to be with him in heaven forever. That's something right there. That power comes upon your life. Again, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That means we have a job to do. There's so much there I could stay there all day and preach to you just out of that one verse. But when we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, receiving his Holy Spirit, the Bible says it is our helper. How many of you need help? I need help. You know, my flesh is weak. I'm still in it. You're still in the flesh until he says, welcome into heaven, and you become that spiritual being that you are inside, and your flesh is no more. Then you are truly overcome of this flesh. We are nobody here perfect yet. Only one was perfect, and his name was Jesus, right? So we're trying to be like Jesus now, and this is how we get the strength to do it, to be overcomers, to realize that we need that strength. We are consumed with the gospel saving power of Jesus when we accept him as our Savior. We're baptized in water, representation of the grave and the old man dying away, the old habits, the old past. It's gone no more. Jesus said, I will remember your sin no more. It's cut off. The same power that accompanied Jesus Christ through his perfect life will then be coming into your life to help you walk on this earth as well. Nobody's, well, they're more spiritual than me. No, 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 no. It's the same spirit. It's how well you go after it. That diligence word we read a while ago, how diligent, how how am I pursuing? Paul says, I have to strive. That means I am after it like an athlete. I'm going after it. I want more of God in my life. I want the best that he has so that I can be the best that I can be on this earth and the purpose he's created for me to fulfill. The same power that accompanied Jesus Christ now lives in those who call on his name. That's you. You have repented of your sins and you have asked Jesus to be your Savior. You have power. Power to do what, Phil? How about rebuke sickness? You've been sick? In the name of Jesus, Father, I call upon your power in heaven. Father, you see my body. You see the infliction I've had in my life. I pray it be gone in the name of Jesus. Why? Because he said a while ago when I read the scripture, if I don't ask, I don't receive. So I better be asking. That's what praying is all about, right? I better be asking God to come in and using the authority of the power of the name of Jesus. It's so real. Not only that, it gives us power over our enemies that he tries to attack. The enemy's out there. He wants to destroy you. What do we, I just said it, some individuals in our own community, our young people. Who is he going to target the most? Those that have innocent hearts that he's trying to destroy. We need to be praying for our young people. We need to be praying for this community that the power of God comes through us into our community so that we see transformation of every life. We have a divine power once we repent and we believe. And as Acts 1 and 8 says, and we receive that power when the Holy Spirit comes in our life. This power transforms our hearts and our desires. This power enables us to proclaim boldly the good news of Jesus. How do you do it, Phil? Well, I'm telling you how I do it. It's because Jesus has come into my life and I have grown in my faith to a point where I'm not afraid to talk and tell you in front of all of you today. I don't have fear when I'm sharing this because I've done it enough. I've grown enough in the understanding of who he is. I've seen too much in the power of miracles happening in people's lives. I've seen things go forth in life right before my eyes that you would have never believed if you weren't there to see it. But you have to have faith to believe. Well, I've seen that, so I have that kind of faith in my life. Then I want you to have that kind of faith. 
I want you to have it. And I'm not saying Phil Green is better than anybody or we have more than you have. I'm just saying I've seen it. I don't need to have anything else. But God, he's already shown it. And I want you to have that same experience. The power to approach the throne of grace in your time of need. How about the power to speak truth over the lies we are tempted to believe? How about the power to cling to hope and joy in the midst of a trial or difficulty? We've all had it. How about power to preserve as faithful saints the long journey of life? Well, I started out strong, Phil, but it's been tough. I understand, but that's because you're not growing your faith. You can't just live on yesterday. Every day you need to get up and say, Lord, I love you. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for saving my soul. Fill me with your spirit and your authority all over again today. Let my body be your body. My mind be your mind. My spirit be your spirit. The power of the name of Jesus even does more than that. I'm just scratching the surface. By faith, the disciples performed miracles, signs, and wonders. How? The authority of the name of Jesus. Well, I could never do that. Oh, yeah, you can. I've seen it. I've prayed for people and watched them get up out of wheelchairs and walk. Not because of Phil Green, but because of the power of the name of Jesus. I've watched people that had been on their deathbed. We lay hands. There's one sitting right over there. Elder John, a few years ago. They had pronounced him basically on his way to heaven. And there were many of us that flew to a a hospital up north and we laid hands on him. And immediately we watched the fluid start flowing just in that moment of prayer. Which, good sign, the kidneys are back in function, right? They had stopped. They had been no fluid. It was very minimal, if any. But God, look at him today. Elder, you're a miracle. I believe it with all my heart. Signs, wonders, Luke 10, 17. Now, there are those that might use the name of Jesus, but if they don't believe in it, there's no power. You say, well, I've been calling on Jesus. Nothing's happening for me, Pastor. Well, where's your faith? Well, let me, tell you, let me show you. Luke 10, 17, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Not theirs, by the way. Don't be calling that challenging the devil with just yourself you'll get in trouble you'll be overcome real fast it's only with the name of Jesus and your faith in him that helps you overcome and fight the devil and he has to flee Acts 4 29 through 34 29 through 30 says now Lord consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus here, empowerment being given. We have the same power if you're a child of God. Jesus has given it through the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we place our faith in him, we can do signs, wonders, miracles. Not because of us, but because of him. There are those people who attempt to perform miracles in the name of Jesus without placing their faith. I want to read such, or actually you can go and read it yourself. I won't take the time today, but it's found in Acts chapter 19. Seven sons of Sceva attempted to cast out demons in the name of Jesus without believing in Jesus. And guess what? They ended up badly beaten, bleeding. What in the world, you know? Here they were trying to do things. They thought just taking the name Jesus is all they had to do. No, they didn't realize that they needed to have faith believing in Jesus for the power to come. That he was the resurrected Christ that was there bringing salvation. There's there's no way they were able to accomplish the the beating they took was from a demon-possessed man. Without the power, you're helpless. There's no sure method to guarantee a miracle every time we pray if we don't have faith 
power in the name of Jesus. It's not a magical formula. That's what these guys thought. It's not magical. It's your faith. And the person's faith you're praying for or with. Because then it goes into, the Bible says, where two or more agree, there is even more. How about three? The, a three-chord strand cannot be easily broken. When you, when you come together, that's why accountability is so important. That's why you have to have a prayer partner, somebody you can call and say, hey, I'm having a tough day. I need you to pray. We're our faith together. We're going to believe. Two become better than one. Three even better. When we belong to him through our faith, we can rely on him and know that his power is at work for us. You know, as believers, we should be fully convinced of the power within that name. There shouldn't be any doubt. That's where I'm at today. I, I, I'm not saying I don't struggle from time to time. I have to rebuke the flesh. But it doesn't mean I forget the power. Our lives as Christians are lived from a place of knowledge. It starts here. See, for me to be a Christian, i got to understand got to take in knowledge for me to be able to have a heart that believes in that knowledge I've taken in you know a lot of people leave it to a mystical feel of I got to feel it no it's about understanding and then the knowledge that you have helps your heart to believe and then you grow and you begin to strengthen and you begin to pray and then you have power and to see the things that happen before your lives come to pass Colossians 3.17, and I'm almost done. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. You'll see me baptizing individuals from time to time, maybe some here today. I use that verse right there give me authority to put somebody under that water. What does it say to do? Whatever I do. Whatever word, whatever deed. That's a deed for me to baptize somebody, right? It's a function of life. I have to do it. It says do everything in the name of the Lord who? So you hear me calling out the name Jesus. Because that's the only name. That's the all powerful name. Why would I not use that? powerful name of Jesus makes it possible for all people to be saved, healed and delivered Psalms 115, I'll give you lots of verses today verse 1 reminds us not to us, O Lord not to us, but to your name give glory for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness, it has nothing to do with me or you it has everything to do Understanding and the belief of Jesus Christ and the power that comes with that name. Saving grace. We call upon his name to redeem us from sin. We call upon the name to powerfully guard our hearts and our minds in our everyday life. We call on Jesus to powerfully equip us to do every good work as we journey through this life. We put on the armor of God, right? Galatians 6 go put on the armor of God so I can walk in the mix of the enemy's arrows and put up my shield of faith and my helmet of salvation. I, I got to have all that girding my life, a girding of the loins and my, my feet being shod with the gospel so I can go forward in this life. See, there's, it's really simple when you start trying to place it all together. You need the power of Jesus because as I read to you earlier, if you don't confess him now, there will come a day. If you'll confess him, then it'll be too late. Because it said every knee will bow and every tongue confess Jesus is Lord. But if you wait after his coming after his church. need that power today. My last 
verse was my first. And I'm going to read just a couple of those verses again. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. For this reason, God highly exalted him, gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee will bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I pray today for you that you will be emboldened and strengthened this morning. Number one, repent. Ask God forgiveness of your sins. Number two, if you've never been baptized, I got clothes for you. I can baptize you today before you leave this building. And let that old man die right there. Number three, you can come up out of that grave empowered to go and do the ministries that God has purposed your life to fulfill. You want true happiness and significance? You need to be doing the will of God. He has a perfect will for your life. I'm going to ask you to stand. I was born 56 years ago I've heard this message but I still had to make a choice for myself I grew up in a minister's home I've been going to church very few Sundays in my life have I ever missed that still don't save me. Just going to church don't save me. It's a good place to be. Don't get me wrong. Go to a lot of good people. Don't just look for the bad apples because there's some here too. But remember, God's in control if you will allow it. You have to make a choice. Today, you may say, well, I made that choice, Bill. Well, I want you to renew that choice today. So I want to pray with you, not for you at this moment, but with you. That you would open your heart and your mouth and talk to God. And then after we get done with that prayer, we're going to have our prayer team towards the back, right back here, along that back wall. If you've never accepted Jesus, we want you to go speak with them. They will help you find Him in reality of who He is. By confessing with your own mouth that He is the Lord and asking forgiveness. But before I do, is there anyone here today that has never been baptized? Would you raise your hand? If you've never been baptized, raise your hand. Come on. Just one? Two? Anybody else back there? Two? Today's the day. I'm ready if you got some folks. Where's Cassie? Cassie? If you'll meet Cassie right back here at these double doors, I'd love to, to do that for you today. Let's do it. She'll be right there. We've got clothes for you. She'll go get you dressed and we'll follow through after we sing a song. But let's pray right now. Would you, Father, you see those that weigh in the balance. You see those that are making decisions as we pray. Father, I pray that confidence, I pray that power of your name Jesus would be upon them to be able to make better choices to be able to grow in you father those that are needing you for salvation I pray that their hearts would be troubled I pray that they would be so disrupted in their life that you in their life they would never forget anything we've said today that would leave here today and they would maybe walk out but they would be convicted because your convicting power is what is working in their life Father, we pray for salvation if there are those in just a moment, Father, that would receive your strength. Father, those that are here today, as we have already said, we pray with the power of your authority in renewing our relationship with you this morning. We thank you for what you're doing in every heart today. 
we give you the glory for all that you're doing in our mix. Father, in our families, we pray for those today that are home hurting right now. We don't know the circumstances, but you do. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we call healing to happen. We call miracles to happen. We pray for infliction to leave and difficulty to be gone. We pray for jobs. We pray for prosperity. We pray for your anointing on this house to do whatever is called us to do. In Jesus' name, we say it so. Amen and amen. If you're here today and you need prayer, our prayer team will be right back here in the back. We're going to sing this song. And if that's you that want to be baptized, if you'll meet right at that back door. Maybe you didn't raise your hand, but God's convicting you. Today's the day. We'll see you in just a moment. God bless you.